I'm I'm Costco Kevin. We're not going to divulge my name on the air. Oh, okay. Ooh, sorry. I'm getting a lot of a lot of harassment coming my way. Okay. We will. Um, we won't say anything else. But uh, this is the guy. Do we have a picture of him? Uh, do Do we have your permission to use this picture without getting hit with a copyright strike? Um, yeah, it wouldn't come from me. I mean, you know, there's YouTube wars on content all day long, but you got my personal permission. Right. But you were, you, you did, you did, out there. you did put your video up and, and basically sign up with a company that, that takes its rights <clears throat> and then collects, you know, all the, uh, all the usage fees correct, uh, across correct. YouTube. Okay. Because we got hit with a and, and, copyright a violation. Uh, subsequent to your your video but it, you, you took the video that's what you do because now when you went into costco just to remind everybody you're the guy and you said um uh you're the um the the, the guy who came in refused to wear a mask and uh costco tyson actually said get out of the store and you told him that you were going to show your three thousand instagram uh, viewers I imagine you have more Instagram viewers now, don't you? Uh, so that's a good question. So my, my personal Instagram and my business Instagram that were initially linked to that via Reddit, uh, yeah, I did pick up an uptick in followers on those. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've started a new personality online with Costco Kevin to try to divert some of that attention over there and away from my personal uh profiles if that makes sense it does make so, sense uh, you're, uh, you're trying to monetize this now but that's not the reason why you acted like such a jerk in costco right i mean you just came up with the idea of like hey i can make some cash on this and and, and i'm you know all so, for that uh the you know make the cash yeah, on your social I'll, media i'll happily discuss that so i actually didn't really have much knowledge about like uh content licensing and media and videos and how that stuff works i was actually reached out to by a representative at Storyful, and then she kind of gave me the download. Hey, you can you can make money off this video, and you know, I mean, you're doing the same thing. You're, exactly. you're making money off your subscribers, and you know, your ad revenue from YouTube, absolutely. And the media with their pharmaceutical companies, you know, pumping them with big bucks, and then I get attacked because somebody calls me and says, "Hey, you can get a small piece of this pie." Oh no, I'm so not attacking you for that. I'm not if attacking I'm, you. For like that. part of a globally trending story. No, I would almost be an idiot if I didn't find a uh, way to absolutely. capitalize. On absolutely, absolutely. Or you could still capitalize on that and also be an idiot. Both those things can exist. They're not mutually exclusive. Absolutely, right. absolutely. But you know, um, let me let me let me bring it back a little bit. You yeah, never, let's let's um, let's get into. You, you hold never, on. Excuse me, Costco, Kevin. Let me just, yes, let me just, let's, let's, let's get to the, to the hub of it. I mean, I, I, I like I say, I, I don't begrudge you for, for uh, monetizing this. What there was a couple of things that stood out. One was that you, you thought you were leveraging your 3000 um, Instagram followers uh, in some way that you wanted to intimidate uh, Costco Tyson um, about that, but let's get to the nub of it. Why, no, no why, why are you refusing when you go into the store to wear a mask, when it's the policy of the store that you need to, and uh, it may be, I'm not sure what state you're in, maybe the policy, it may be actually the, the law of the state. Okay. So it's not the law of the state. And that's, that's one thing I have a huge problem with is how recommendations slowly become enforced laws because, uh, you know, if I'm being told to do something, I don't want to be made to do something. I don't want to, to turn from a recommendation to, oh, you can face jail time or whatever. There's a couple cities in Colorado that are implementing some of those practices, I think, with very loose actual regulation on it, because I don't know if they would think that it would actually hold up in front of a jury. Hey, this guy wasn't wearing a mask, you know, outside of, you know, this law that was never voted into legislation. Okay. So. I think it'd be hard to set that legal precedent without I, there being a I, much I, more monumental case to provide that precedent. Does that right. make sense? No, I mean, not so, really, but let me ask you this. Um, so, so can you give me an example of when you have a situation where anybody has been cited by governmental authorities, municipal, county, state, based upon a recommendation 
that isn't a uh, a law or a regulation, like a, like like one that's issued by let's say the health department. I mean, is there is there any instance that you can point to where just a recommendation has uh, led to someone being cited or arrested or something like that? I mean, not that I could think of as a recommendation, but what right. cities are doing is they um they have the right to make city or city ordinances so it doesn't exactly have to go through like a process they can just kind of write in a city ordinance so correct cities can much more easily make an ordinance so if there was a city ordinance right then that would be uh maybe more applicable to the situation or for instance like in colorado there will be signs that say no open carry right do not bring a gun into the establishment but there's a law to back that up so if you bring that weapon into the establishment, then you're violating, you know, this law, this section, whatever, whatever. What if there, and then they can call the police on what you. If and there you is, right. What if there is right? What if there is a law that says, in uh, if the Department of Health determines that there is an emergency, or if the Department of Health determines that a restaurant, let's say, has um, violated uh, health health uh, regulations or is a or is just simply what you know they're doing something that we hadn't contemplated but that the health department determines is uh problematic in terms of people's health who goes in there does the health department have the ability to let's say shut down that store or order them to uh fix things so i would say that on a case-by-case -case basis if they can attribute a, an outbreak of salmonella or typhoid fever or food poisoning right that came from a specific restaurant and they can back that up then i would say yeah if they're like hey there was a coronavirus outbreak that was associated with phil's tacos down the street we're shutting them down we're finding them right what what i think a lot of people on my side of the aisle don't agree with is that we just completely just indiscriminately just shut down every single small business every single small restaurant with only the majority of just big chains operating. And I would say the more logical and fair approach would be to selectively shut down businesses and to selectively enforce it based off if they can find an outbreak they can attribute to that source. Does that make sense? Then I would be No, fair. it like doesn't they, they because I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense. Because then you will just be shutting down places where there was an outbreak, not where there might be one in the future. In other words, if you're dealing with a pandemic, it's one thing if there is a single source of a, let's say, a foodborne illness, right? The food coming out of the kitchen at Al's food place is giving people salmonella. But what if it's the customers who are coming in who leave that place and are going out into the world to other places? So there, there, there was a new study that just came out that they say that now it seems very unlikely that coronavirus is spreading through surfaces um and then there's other studies that say coronavirus the cdc is has determined that right by now, the right. eyeball i'm sorry yeah cdc has has put that out but um so here's what i'm saying is we're taking all of these drastic measures and i understand that fear is a giant proponent behind this because if things that are unknown are very scary but you know we are making very big life and country altering decisions based off science that's been a little shoddy science that seems just to be changing research that hasn't been done clinical trials that haven't been even set in motion you know we're trying to rush vaccines that should take years to develop we're trying Correct. to you know there's a lot of unprecedented things happening and i think that um that you know we need to approach so, this more rationally, so as more a calmly instead of from a position of fear okay so in your world, the way you deal with a pandemic, which has taken uh, tens of thousands of lives around the world, hits this country, and even with the protections we have taken, has taken 100,000 lives in the course of eight weeks, your approach would be, let's not do anything that what? Like, what would you, if you have the opportunity on March 1st, you have this information. They've had to shut down Italy. All the scientists are saying, all the epidemiologists are saying, this is the pandemic that we have been warning about. 
And uh, there's reason to believe that, you know, we can't know everything about the, about the coronavirus. It's new. We don't know exactly, like, we don't know why there are spikes six months after the 1918 flu. I don't think there's an epidemiologist out there who will tell you that they know why, even now, why it spiked and the second spike six months later was even worse. They can't tell you that for assuredness. You, are, you have this information. You are the president of the country, uh, or maybe you're the, I don't know, whatever, the chief health inspector, whatever it is you want, whatever position you want that you think, um, um, what should we have done at that time? You know, um, groups of people gathered together and discussed this very same topic that two people like you and I who are not in that loop, and they have far more information than we have, whether it's on the good side or the bad side, this is a question that, that colleges are going to ponder. I mean, that's a very academic level question. I appreciate it. Well, it's not it. an it's academic question, question at I'm, all. I'm going to say. It's not an academic I'm, question I'm at all. This. It's specifically, um, you're saying that the course of action that these, that the medical professionals have recommended, that the uh, state authorities and um, uh, municipal authorities have followed is wrong. And so I'm asking you, based upon your ability to assess that their their reaction was wrong, what would have been the right one? So here's here, let's say I'm President Trump, right? I've got all these forces tugging on me in the White House, all these people saying, hey, the economy jobs over here, all these people saying, hey, we have massive life loss over here, we need to be careful. You can't just, you know, uh, appease only one side. You have to work with both sides in the democracy, you know. Um, so I think as a compromise, you know, and I'm looking back, I'm not in the hot seat, but looking back, I would say if the shutdown was really the only way to do it, it probably just should have been maybe um, a much stricter two week only shutdown and not have us two months into a two week quarantine where they just keep pushing the timeline back, pushing the timeline back. People are getting uneasy. They don't know when their lives are going to go back to normal. Uh, you know, the, the media, you have to admit, the media is just constantly. Well, wait a second. We're not listening. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, listen, listen. Let's not change so, the topic here. We're talking about you went into a store now and we haven't even gotten to the fact that a store has the ability to uh, create its own, uh, um, you know, uh, policies in that regard. And we can get to that in a moment. But you're just saying that um, you think a two week shutdown and what would have happened from an epidemiological perspective? What would have happened with a two week shutdown? What, when, what would that have done? Because a virus is not so, a political question in terms of like whether it exists or doesn't exist. You can't compromise absolutely. with a virus, right? So what would the two weeks have done uh, in your estimation? So that, that two week period is kind of that gestation period. You're supposed to sit back in quarantine to determine if you're developing symptoms or if you're asymptomatic, uh, you're still at home anyways to avoid your exposure to people. At a certain point, you or I, if we would have already felt sick or been asymptomatic, we would have been clear from those non-symptoms or we would have cleared up or maybe if we were over 78 years old and had three existing comorbidities, we would have passed away. So um, that's that's my thing. Like, how long do we have to quarantine for? Stay inside for? We've already been locked down, socially distancing. They've already shut all the theaters down, all of the big sports venues, restaurants. I mean, we've been staying away from each other. And no doubt, do I have? Um, you know, I'm under the impression that that has helped to flatten the curve. But we don't need to flatten the economy in an attempt to just endlessly flatten the curve. One thing that we're going to have to take into account is coronavirus. Now that it's been released into the natural environment from the Wuhan Virology Lab with stu study funding, you know, it's not given by it's not, the it's, it, it, well, Let me just stop you there for a second. Um, well, let me just stop you there. Out. Hey, Costco, uh, Larry, whatever your name is. Let me just stop you there. Uh, it, it, there is no agency in the U.S. government, including uh, Trump's, that... Um, that that now claims it was released from a lab. I just want to be clear. Um, yeah, in a way to like as a geopolitical ploy to not cause a larger ramp. I, up I, I know in your mind, biological, psychological. I know in your mind China, that you have, have a narrative about this, situation. but you're going to have to cite an authority other than your speculation if you're going to say that. 
Yeah, I mean, you can, you can look it up. The National Institute of Health, Fauci is the one that literally had to move his research offshore to continue that research of gain-of-function technologies. We don't need to be experimenting with gain-of-function with viruses that don't exist, and then we bring them into existence <clears throat> so we can figure out how to create a vaccine for them. Uh, we know it didn't come from that. No, it didn't come from wet. No, 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 we do. No, in fact, no, um, you're a hundred percent. You know, they're, now they're, you're just, you, now you're just spewing your, your, your conspiracy theories. And it, unless you have a specific well, citation, well, let's move on. With. Let's move you on to something else. I, 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 I have, I have, I can assure you I have. Uh, and, um, and so um, let's move on to just off of your pure Let's speculation. Get back to Costco and the policy. Y- yes, right? yes. Why did I walk into Costco knowing there's like some sign on the door that can be any goofy rule? Hey, you got to hop on one foot. Hey, we got to stick a finger in your butt. Hey, you got to do this before you enter. So, no shoes, no shirt. Do you have a problem with no shoes, than, no shirt, uh, no service? Does that bother well, you too? If I walk around with shoes, like I'm kind of hurting my feet. If I don't walk around with a shirt, like, I'm getting a sunburn or whatever. This isn't like, you know, but if you're indoors, if you're indoors, you're not going to get a sunburn. If you're not, if you're indoors, you're not going to get a sunburn. So you could theoretically, why not just walk up to those Costco doors, take your shirt off, walk in. Sure. Why not walk in wearing a helmet either? This is like besides the point. The point is, no, but the point is Costco's a special situation. Let me just explain. Please just yeah. give me the fourth 30 seconds. Sure. I signed a membership contract with Costco. I like you don't even sign like I pay to be there. Right. But some people say that makes it a privilege or whatever. I say I have more of a right to be there than somebody else that just walked in off the street because I pay for a membership upon paying for that membership. I signed a contract where I agreed to terms and conditions that were within that contract, which you don't do when you walk into a small business or a Walmart, you don't sign a form to agree to terms and conditions. There was no term and condition in that contract stating that I have to wear a mask. Therefore, people will send me messages saying, well, they say in the contract that the terms and conditions are subject to change on short notice, to which I argue that voids the validity of a contract if you can just retroactively change any term of the contract at will for any reason. You don't want to buy a car for $25,000, $500 a month, and they come back and say, hey, you know what? We retroactively changed the terms of your contract. It's now $30,000, and you're paying us $750 a month. So my approach would be to say, Costco, you need to upgrade your you upgrade your user membership and either need to do an email blast and get people to dock you signs to these new retroactive policies that people don't agree with and are controversial. We could sign in store or you could send us a letter in the mail where we sign and we agree. I'm a member and you know, an HOA, anything else, it's not it's like it still has processes to run through. The people still have to vote, they still have to agree on it. I understand it's a quote unquote private company. They're publicly traded. They're in the public domain. And they're one of the only main stores in my area I can go to because everything else is closed. So they're like, why don't you go somewhere else? And it's like, let's open that somewhere else. And I will vote with my dollars because we need to support small business right now, not Costco. Well, Costco, Chad. I'm glad you the user contract. I'm glad you've come to that realization that you should uh, you should support the smaller businesses uh, at this moment. But I think you have every right. And I think you have a legal argument as to um, uh, getting your membership uh, refunded at this point, because you don't like the institution of new policies. Um, I think that uh, makes sense. But you signed a contract, you paid for the membership, they have the ability to change their policies. And that's, that's what you agreed to. Like I say, I think that warrants your being able to uh, get a refund. But the idea that you can go in there and expose everybody else, I mean, you understand the dynamic with the masks, right? Like you walked in there. Yeah, they don't, you said, they don't work. Excuse me. Not Hold on for one second. Saying, excuse me. Cover your excuse face me. with a cloth. Excuse with a me. Scarf. Excuse Just me. Find something to cover excuse your me. face with. The, the excuse virus me. passes right through that. Excuse me. Um, you understand the dynamic with the mask, right? It's that. Your mask is to keep you from broadcasting if you are asymptomatic to other people in the store. And it is true. I've had two months to determine that I am asymptomatic. Okay. Like, how do you know that you're asymptomatic as of yesterday? You've been going out to Costco. Socially isolated. I've already been socially isolated. Well, but they, first of all, 
They don't know that. But are you telling me that the first time you left your house was to go to Costco? No. What, okay. No, are no, you no, telling I mean, me nice that the first contact you had with people was before you went into Costco? You're welcome. Who's I'm that? Sorry, would you please How are you talking question? to somebody? Are you in Costco right now? No, but my point is, is that you don't know the whole point of being uh, the whole problem with being asymptomatic is that you don't know if you've contracted it. And so the it is and it would be unfair to assume that I did. It's not. That's exactly it. Nobody's assuming. That's why everybody is required to wear a mask, because they're not assuming any individual has it. They're assuming that in a store of however many people are in there. Statistically speaking, the odds are it is more than unlikely that one person has it in there. We don't know who that person is. So we're requiring everybody, we're being completely non-discriminated about it. Everybody has to wear the mask. Yeah. Your and that, rights that's where, and- I, that's where I kind of draw the line. And, and you know, I, that's where I say, this isn't about the mask, it's about control. And, and, and what a perfect way to make that point than to go and to go hit some of the people enforcing this and say, hey, this is ridiculous. We've been in this for two months. There's no end in sight. You know, we, we do live in a free country and I'm tired of living in fear. What the media told us, the same people that are telling us. Well, what that are you so Donald afraid Trump about that you can't go? Then why? Chance. Listen, why? These, these are the, the hold on one second. Sorry to interrupt. These are the same news media sources that told us Donald Trump had a less than 10% chance of winning the 2016 election. The same people that say that Joe Biden, by the numbers, is the Democratic front runner for the Democratic Party. The people telling us this information uh, are telling us the coronavirus numbers. The same people telling us the ice caps are going to be melted by 2010, you know, and earlier. Uh, they they are melting. To their models. They are melting. The ice caps are. No, there's been like record. There's been record ice cap growth. Polar bear populations are, are totally strong, um, you know. And then if you think about all the sea ice, okay. And so, do you not think levels, that right? ninety-five thousand people have died of COVID in this country? What was that? You, do you do you disagree with the idea that ninety-five thousand people have um, have uh, died of COVID in this country? Thank you. That's a really excellent question. I'm glad we get to touch upon that because. You can look at the CDC or even state, municipality, local governments. They are doing number enhancement. That's the term. If you type in COVID death enhancement, they're classifying all deaths. The word is among people with coronavirus as coronavirus death. So, so you what think it's is, a is when the state reports the death, and if they test positive for coronavirus at the time of death, whether they died of alcoholism, like a man here in a Colorado county had almost twice the lethal, not legal, lethal limit of alcohol in his system. He was a 0.5, a 0.3 can kill you. Okay. Okay. So, not a point so zero let me just, three, right? let me so just, let me they just classify his death. I, I, I understand what you're saying. So those I understand numbers what you're are saying. inflated. I understand in what you're saying. Now, so, so, so if I was to say to you, year over year deaths in this municipality are X and now they are, you know, uh, X plus 2000 year over year deaths in terms of this month, let's say that, uh, and this person had COVID, these 2000 had COVID, but you just think it's a coincidence that they had COVID, that they represent a year over year increase in deaths. You just think it's a coincidence. They had something else fatal. Well, let me, let me, let me tell you this. There's no year over year data first and foremost, because uh, it was not introduced into the, into the environment until earlier this no, year. No, fact, no, 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 not year I over year on coronavirus. coronavus. Every year, number, hold I, on, I every think. year, every city says in the month of March, we had 300 people die. And in the month of March in 2019, we had 300 people die. In the month of March in, in 2018, we had 275 die. In the month of March of 2016, we had 325 die. And then all of a sudden, the month of March in 2020 comes and they have 1,300 die. A thousand of them had been Mm -hmm. diagnosed with COVID. But you think it's also a coincidence that they didn't die of COVID, that they actually died of something else. And it was just coincidence that they had COVID too. And they're being counted as COVID deaths. I just want to be clear on what you're arguing. We have to understand that, you know, 
the local governors are stressing that they're working on getting more accurate tests because there's a lot of false positives being triggered. There's also other members of the coronavirus family that can exist within us mm. that aren't COVID-19 at all. So I there's see. other triggering things. What accounts for the extra deaths that we're result. seeing in the country, do you think? What was that? What accounts for the extra deaths uh, that, that we're seeing in the country? Well, here's the deal. If you look at those extra coronavirus deaths, notice how deaths in other categories have been falling. If you look at certain like CDC and Health Institute records, like like heart attacks and strokes and car accidents and these other things are dying. Do you I think mean, car like, accidents these might numbers not, are, not, not, these not, other numbers are, I'm sorry, these other numbers are falling. Do you think car accidents might drop get, because people are driving less? Absolutely. But also they, they, look it up, man. They, they are literally reclassifying people's deaths, even if they're dying in car accidents, they're doing whatever they can to inflate the numbers. So I think who is if they? State, the CDC? So hold on. My, my who, who, state, I want to know who the Colorado. they is. I want to know who the I'm, they I'm, is in your in your uh, your assessment that they are inflating the numbers. Who's the they? So it is actually uh, the state bilaterally with the CDC. So what happens is right. Like okay. Your local so corner, let me just be clear. You know, your local medical. Let examiner. me just be let clear. No, no. I hold understand. Okay, I understand. Okay. I understand. Okay. I just want to be clear on the assessment that the, the, the argument that you're making here. So you're saying that the, um, that the CDC appointed by Donald Trump, the head of the CDC appointed by Donald Trump, who I think we can both yeah. agree that Donald Trump has a, um, a real vested interest in making sure that the numbers of deaths are lower. You're saying the CDC has gone rogue to conspire with the governors in all these states, and this is this is a little risky for them, right? For the CDC, because they don't necessarily, maybe they have pre-existing relationships and they all planned that we're going to introduce this thing. We just, we have counterparts in every other country in the world. And we're, this is, we're going to uh, pretend that this is happening. And why are they doing this? What is the motivation for this? Well, the motivation is to ultimately implement the tenets of socialism. Like if you think about the Green New Deal, look at all of the objectives that are being reached by the far left in the Green New Deal. They want to eliminate airplane travel. Right. Look what happened. They want to stop us from eating meat. It's the mm. end of meat. The end of meat is here. Well, guess what? We have meat production shortages. They're slaughtering animals in the masses because there's nowhere for them to go. We've reduced carbon emissions because we're not traveling in vehicles as much. Um, you know, so, people are starting to get a universal basic income, right? Right. So, so just to be um, clear, just to be clear, they're not actually, they're, you know, they're, there's, they've, they've gotten a couple of stimulus checks, but they haven't gotten a universal basic income. I mean, George W. Bush did it's the like same. It's like a sample. George, yeah, George Bush did like the same a, thing. Right. Uh, so let me just, I want to be clear because I think I find this fascinating. And I think um, I'm, frankly, uh, we're on what Jamie is on. And if, this was happening. I'm a little bit annoyed that she didn't like let me in on this because she certainly probably, I would imagine one of her meetings would have heard about this. But the, so if I have what you're saying, I'm just, if I understand what you're saying, it is the socialist left that has conspired to get the CDC in the Trump administration to conspire with governors around the country obviously setting up the existence of the Wuhan virus that they got released by Fauci from a laboratory. They knew it would travel around. They had done tests on this. This could be at least a pretend pandemic. They spread it around. They call it a scandemic or a, sc a plandemic. Scandemic or a plandemic. I understand. And so it, it travels around the world. Uh, now, do you think this stuff in Italy actually happened or was that part of the socialist program or, 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 or maybe it didn't even happen and we just saw that from the socialist media? Well, you know, when the communists, uh, when, 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 when the USSR fell, right. you know, that war never stopped. I mean, right. those people filtered back into society. Right. They went back down to they're Italy. right up against nor communism nor the, and socialist right. forces to this day. So right. we would be ignorant to assume totally. that there wasn't still these very strong tendencies leaning towards socialism. We see it. We see the national uprising. And, you know, before this happened, there were protests all over the world, especially in Hong Kong. Right, right. And man, does that play well to China's interest when the protests in Hong Kong have been. So we, but, but just we, we just of, we just for my audience, just make it clear. How did China fake this whole thing in northern Italy, too? 
So they didn't fake the whole thing in Northern Italy. Let me let me let me take it one step further, okay? It's right. not just like the CDC and like you know China went to the CDC. So it's the World Health Organization right, that course. works in combine with China. As you see, Trump just recently sent a letter to the World Health Organization, pretty much saying if you do not restructure the World Health Organization, I'm going to permanently take now, away your funding because you are acting now, on dude, the dude, let me of ask them. you this question. We pay over 10 times the amount of money right. to the World Health right. Organization, right. receive zero advocacy. Right. We have the feeling that zero they advocacy. knew about the Wuhan coronavirus before it started spreading beyond China. China was trying to keep it under wraps, right? But then it kind of exploded. As for Italy, okay, hold on for we once. know a very large portion of Italy uh, is very elderly. They're like 80 up. So they have multi-generational living in Italy. We're like, no, but wait a second, grandkids, wait a second, parents, wait a second, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me this is a socialist plot, but it does actually kill elderly people. And absolutely does. I see. I see. So the socialist I'm not plot totally was totally ignorant. It's a real oh. virus. I'm not saying some people are out there saying the thing oh, doesn't totally. exist. Oh, I see. I okay. See. I see. Like, I, man, I, I'll still wash my hands after coming back home from Costco. But what? I'm not like living and shriveling in fear. I'm just being like that sounds a little. A little that sounds a little wimpy just, to know, me, buddy. But it sounds uh, a little wimpy. But you know what? I would be an ignorant fool just to say, "Hey, the thing doesn't exist." I'm going off based off the research from you know what I've been able to gather. What what, what research are you going after? What what been, what research you know, have you been? What 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 research that tells you you should wash read, your hands? Read between the but, lines. You know, read between the lines. Is like, that a website? You know, a lot of these institutions function off half truths, which is how they gain their credibility. They got it. They can't just BS. But how do you know that you have the right half truth? Let me ask you this. How do you know that you have the right half truth? Maybe the half truth is you wear the mask and the lie is you wash your hands. And it, maybe it is, but, but dude, know, uh, what if that's, enough. what if that's the real truth? understood and what if that is the thing that people are still debating today these experts that shut everything down and are causing untold suffering in the third world because the global economy ground to a halt and the world health organization and the i am uh the international monetary now Fund so listen if this is fake three million people in the third world are at risk of extreme poverty and starvation and are already beginning to die of starvation because of the severe economic consequences will you tell me about your advocacy for third world poverty that existed prior to coronavirus i'm sorry you broke up a little bit could you please repeat that uh can you tell me just let everybody know the work that you've been doing on third world poverty issues uh prior to coronavirus because i think that's important to give you your argument credibility the, the work i've been doing man i'm one of the only people i know advocating for the third world we're over here saying oh 90,000 people are dead in inflated numbers, which I think that number is about 60,000 maximum. But, um, you know, not many people are over here saying, hey, what effect is this having on the third No, world? no, but I meant before Why the coronavirus. Is, it, is this, is this what, it, was, it, was it the coronavirus so, that opened your eyes to what was going on in the third world? No, I've always known what was going on in the third world. And it's a problem that even with the advent of GMOs, where they said, we'll be able to feed the world with GMOs. We can grow bigger crops and more bountiful yields. And they promised they were going to end global starvation. But the deal is they always have to have an underdeveloped, underclass of society that will do the dregs of work Co- that the more privileged right. people in the first world Co- societies aren't willing to Costco, do. Costco, Kevin, what, what is what, – what, give, give us a sense of what your main news sources are. Well, here, I'll read to you something from Fox 31 News, KDVR. And they're, they're, um, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, what? Wait, wait. No, no, no. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want you to read me any of the news stories. I'm just, well, here, what is the I, name I wanna, of the, what is the name of the website? State. Wait, 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 wait. What's the name of the website? Fox 31 News, KDVR. Oh, Denver's Fox 31 news, news. I see. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're like the main, like, news source in Denver. That's, that's like, one of my go-tos. In fact, I visit CNN like 10 times a day. Mm. Not because I believe them. It's kind of like I'm monitoring them. Right. No, it's like, good. Like, oh, what are they coming up with next? What are they saying next? <laughs> Absolutely crazy. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it is crazy no, that I have I an alternative it. viewpoint, but yet I view in so frequently to people who I disagree with because you got to understand that for me to be able to argue my point with you, I need to be able to argue your point better. Yeah. And until I was about 23, I was a very far left-leaning liberal. I grew up in Boulder, Colorado. 
Um, I, I, I know everything. I used to be anti-gun, pro-abortion, you know, every single thing. I would have been for the UBI if I even knew that existed. Global warming, everything. My opinions changed over time, not because I got brainwashed, but just because sometimes your opinions change. Sometimes, right. you know. So, like, I completely, like, empathize and sympathize. Well, with tell people, me, what, what was, I I'm curious, people are coming I'm, from. I'm curious, Costco, Kevin, when did your, was it, was it Fox 31 uh, KDVR that uh, opened your eyes? I mean, what, when was that moment where you realized all this stuff was, was uh, where this was headed, where the, the socialist left was taking over and using coronavirus as a way of rolling in uh, socialist programs? You know, um, I think when you have like a certain way of thinking politically, mm. like you don't require instruction anymore or somebody else's opinion. I think that opinion forms automatically. Well, no, no, but, I, but the like facts, prim- principles where, where, you believe. Where, what about the facts? Like, where are you getting the facts to undergird this opinion? From most Man, of- I have to unfortunately say that due to the polarization of this country, uh, there's two sets of facts in this country. Unfortunately, one set of facts will be rejected by one side, one set of facts will be rejected by another. So even if I told you sources of facts, like no. let's say like, man, I listen to all these extremely educated people well, but on I, the InfoWars platform or Info- like David Knight, right? Uh, InfoWars you know, platform. Very eloquently spoken. Look up David Knight. He is great. He can really, David really Knight? speak well. What I else? listen to Ron you, Paul. Ron I listen Paul. to Rand Paul. Rand Paul. You know, I think Donald Trump needs to read the well, Constitution. This is unexpected. See, I'm not a Republican. Right. People are like, oh, he's a redneck Republican. How am I a redneck Republican? I live in Colorado. I used to be a liberal. Uh, I I don't have a farm truck. Uh, I listen to rap music. Okay. So you let know? me ask you this. So, Who do you think is behind this? The, who's behind this uh, socialist cabal? I'm just curious. Let's get to the nub of the thing. Man, I mean, the the, the powers that be have really 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 growing i mean it's it's most of the leaders in europe it's it's you know trudeau up north in canada it's bernie sanders in america it's aoc Mm. uh you know it's people that are in all of these global organizations that you know why is bernie sanders not president if he's if they're able to pull these uh levers why isn't aos why isn't bernie sanders president why did he lose to joe biden you know, there's dirt that they have on people that we'll never know. And I'm upset with Bernie because, uh, you know, he didn't stand up against Hillary when she rigged the election against him and stored the electoral votes and did this and that. And he should have done like what Trump did. And if he would have stood up like Trump did, Bernie Sanders would have been president. And I have no doubt that if there wasn't social distancing in place and there could be rallies, Bernie and Trump would be holding rallies and Bernie would be the number one candidate, not a guy that touches children and can't put a sentence together. Bernie is the populist of the left. He's the only personality. He's the only likable one. And he's, I hate to say it, he's one of the more common sense people on the far left, even though his, I completely disagree with what he says, I can understand what he says. Even so, though, even though he is, he is undoubtedly part of this ruling conflict, cabal that you said, this part of this ruling cabal that has basically perpetrated this whole coronavirus fraud. So there, there's like the globalist agenda that's at hand, right? It's like the military industrial complex, the United States imperialism. And there's like Bernie's there's working with the globalist military industrial to... complex as part what of the, that? so just do you understand Bernie is working with the global military industrial complex. No, 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 no. Uh, people like, like Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden are, that's who they want. So they're putting up Joe Biden now who can't speak. You agree with me that he has trouble formulating a basic sentence, right? I mean, I don't think he's the uh, most adept. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So that being said, I believe that they're going to use that same premise. Like, Oh, Trump isn't fit for president. When it gets a little bit further down the road, they're going to start saying uh, that Joe Biden isn't fit for president. And we have to shoehorn in somebody else, a lady that's been really quietly waiting in the wings, a lady that, that, you know, got recent facial surgery. She looks different now. Her name's Hillary Clinton. She's waiting in the wings. And whether that she becomes his VP and then they, they uh, what is it, the 25th Amendment where they can oust you for not being fit for president? You know, they oust him. You're not mentally fit. You can't make a competent decision. Vice President Hillary, you become the president. 
Oh. Or at the very end, when all of the major candidates are knocked out of the game, they're going to say, man, you can't even – you can't even debate. Like they can't put them on a on a debate stage with ten right. other. Candidates. Okay. Well, listen, Costco, it's Kevin. Costco, Kevin. This has been we're a little far afield. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to let Jamie have the last word here because um, I think uh, we. Have... Well, maybe she has a question for me. Maybe maybe Jamie uh, wants to ask me a question. Few things. Um, I don't know if you've been watching this show's coverage of the uh, coronavirus, uh, quote unquote, recovery, but. If the goal was to implement socialism, we're doing a piss poor job. Let me tell you that much. Uh, this most of the money schedule. Huh? You guys are behind schedule. You guys wanted this done a long time ago. No, but I think what Jamie's saying is that if you look at what the Democrats just passed in the House, it involved things like subsidizing Cobra as opposed to Medicare for all or expanded Medicare. It involves uh, things like uh, uh, paying money for lobbyists as opposed to, um, you know, putting in automatic stabilizers to uh, help the economy. In other words, it is, it's as if we were really good at faking the whole coronavirus thing, but very bad at the legislative uh, follow-up. But go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, so that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I mean, I've, I've been vacillating during this whole thing between getting mad and just laughing because it's a little ridiculous but like i go i go i go for a walk in my neighborhood and i see makeshift morgues outside of the hospital made from refrigerated trucks and they're full of bodies like do you think those bodies are fake are those just dolls that they put in there to trick us well that's really funny you say that because um one of the things that i'm against is the uh one size fits all approach to handling the coronavirus. I understand. I already said that this is a real thing. It's really killing people, primarily people with comorbidities over the age of 78. So that they don't matter. Those hot spots and those hot spots need to be handled regionally. So Wyoming shouldn't be underneath the same level of closures as New York City is, mm. or maybe pe- LA. Even but who is making, making that determination? Who is making that determination? Are people not allowed to travel between New York and Wyoming? But and who's making those determinations? It's the state authorities, isn't it? Right. Well, because Donald Trump left it up to the authorities. He's like to the to the governors and mayors. He's like, fine, you guys handle it. States, right? You guys want to do it? That's why the red states are so they're determining what. That's the the very definition of non one state. uh, You know, one size fits all. So what's your problem? There's a lot of Democratic governors and mayors, and you have regulatory authorities over them, and. There's a lot of other bureaucratic campering and red tape going on. And mm. we'd be fools if we didn't admit that a lot of this was political and still going on. And this is a battle to reopen this country. And people are like, we're reopening the country. And I'm like, listen, if we're phase one now and we're two months into a two-week quarantine, when are we going to be fully open? 2022, wow. this coronavirus is here to stay. It's in the environment. We need to learn to deal with it, to cope with it, but to live a life. As you know, you know what, you know what people say, you know what people, every person, every person who has made that argument is wear masks, particularly indoors when you're in places where there's a lot of people and you were the guy who refused to do it. I appreciate the call. I wish you good luck in your, uh, your Instagram following and, and whatnot. But can I say one and, more thing? Yeah, I already let him go, but you can finish oh, it up. Well, I mean, even if all of these things are true. Right. Even if the coronavirus is an international communist conspiracy to, you know, get a UBI or whatever, um, why would you take it out on the poor guy who has to work at Costco and deal with people like you and he can't leave? You call them a pussy bitch. I posit that if you're behaving this way towards a worker who is underpaid and stressed out, you, sir, are the pussy ass bitch. Yeah, that is a great I'm a, way to end that. And, I'm and, ashamed you let him go before we could find out more about all the uh, stay behind uni- communists in Italy after the war. Uh, I think I Claudio was, little, was communists was a pretty good take. I was a little worried that he was going to give away the game, to be honest with you. And I didn't want uh, I didn't want uh, I didn't want that revealed. Well, that was uh, that was uh, definitely interesting. Um, he, I should say he contacted us. I think he went around with everybody who played the video 
and uh, contacted because he really wants to get the word out there. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, this is the thing is that like that guy could put together a sentence better than uh, a lot of libertarians. Like he could certainly argue his point. Um, it was based upon a completely insane premises. But once he got the premise uh, right, he could continue on with the with the uh, with the argument. And um, and and there it is. But I think Jamie had the best point. Like, uh, you know, it's all belied by the fact that he was picking on the one person who had no power in that situation, but was just simply uh, doing what his boss has told him to do. Well, Tyson yeah. is part of the globalist socialist cabal as well, I think. So. Well, all right. But Costco, Kevin didn't know that. We placed him, we placed Costco Tyson there. In fact, maybe I'm saying too much. Costco Tyson is a clone. We have about 45 of these guys. We put them around all the Costco's. And Costco Tyson is a clone. People know that. He's going around. He's just getting- um, Destroying liberty. We got an app right here where we control everything he says. And that's that. <laughs>